challenge of releasing a film by a first-time director is a lot of people don't really know who they are. So how do you make that process uh, transparent? The process is part of the product getting to experience the decisions he's making, getting to experience the films he's referencing in order to come up with the look, listening to the music that he's listening to when he's picking the soundtrack or writing the script. How do you immerse the audience in that process of making film? Because there are people out there that watch the behind the scenes on the DVD, that sit in the theater and look at all the credits to see all the amazing technicians and craftspeople and artists that help make this film. And that audience is a pe- are the type of people that are going to be interested in going through the process of making a film with this first or second time director. The thing that makes independent film so great is not really being beholden to larger market sort of pressures. You know, if you're making a movie for $3 million, now you need George Clooney. You know, you can't really pick the, the, the actor that you really wanted because the studio is saying, well, we actually need a bankable star. I got to listen to Ed Burns talk the other day, and he was saying the beautiful thing about making a, a low-budget or no-budget movie is because you can cast who you want. You know, so filmmakers love that environment and directors love that environment because it really lets them do what they want to do and execute their vision. You know, and there aren't these ridiculous market considerations because you're working at such a large scale that the risk is so great that you have to kind of follow the market. So you have a lot more flexibility on a creative level working at this really small range. You know, at Reversal Films, we kind of jokingly refer to ourselves as entreproducers. And what that really boils down to is every single independent film that gets created is its own separate legal structure. So the main reason that most people choose to be independent filmmakers is for creative control. So if you're trying to preserve creative control and make the stories and tell the stories that you want to tell, then you need to understand the business side so you can understand what you need to do in order to make that creative vision sustainable as well. Because if you don't learn that side, you're only going to make one movie. So you need to find that balance. So you're constantly balancing sort of artistic integrity and sustainability and making and assessing these different decisions that you have to make and say, okay, is this good for me business-wise? Yes. But is it good for me creatively? Maybe, maybe not. Or is this good for me creatively but a terrible business decision? So you're always kind of walking that fine line. It's a discipline. I don't think it has to do with filmmakers and business people. I think there's a fundamental lack of education. When you go to film school and you're making a commercial product for sale, it doesn't matter what it is. There's still the mechanics of business that you have to respect. So I think that filmmakers need to not only understand the craft, but also understand that there's their financial and profit levers that are going to govern their creativity. And the better understanding that a filmmaker has about the business pressures, the freer they are going to be to make the project they want because they understand the business. I went to film school to learn f-stop, how to read f-stops and set them. Now I know how to project revenues. I know how to assess the risk of a project. You know, your lexicon changes, your mind changes. But for the better, I feel like. You hear the term sellout thrown around, you know? And I, I, I kind of think it's a humorous sort of term because it just is really naive. You know, it's like you want to make the art you want to make. Well, learn how the business fuels your art and liberate yourself so you're not beholden to anybody. You know, it's like 50,000 fans in the world at the same time that love my work and are going to buy my work because I have it on my website. David Lynch sells from his site. He can make whatever he wants. You know, so that's that's freedom. But with that freedom comes great responsibility. You really just got to think about what's best for the community and what's best for society. And am I pushing society in a positive direction? Or is it just gratuitous? And you always got to kind of assess that. The Sustainable Cinema Initiative is a model that Reversal Films has developed to take on the challenges of institutionalizing independent film. So preserving the first-time film, preserving the financing for the second-time filmmaker to really experiment, create, and push the boundaries. And it's all about creating nine micro, micro-budget micro films in 16 months. So what we're doing is we're cross-collateralizing the money we're raising and diversifying the risk across several different projects. Now, the the logic is obviously that you want eight of them to at least be a single or a double, but then there's going to be that one movie that performs. So with with that under consideration, you're giving investors not a one-off one-off project, you're giving them essentially a portfolio of opportunity, which to a lay investor or to a more experienced investor is a concept that they understand. 
Um, I think that as producers start to recognize the challenge of financing one-off productions, and what I mean by one-off productions is here's one movie. It's going to have its own LLC. We're going to raise $3 million into this LLC or a $1 million into this LLC, and, and we're going to put all our, our eggs in this basket. The Sustainable Cinema Initiative is all about multiple baskets, diversifying that risk, and and not only – diversifying the risk so you have a better chance in the marketplace but building in the marketing and distribution infrastructure into the SCI to bring the product directly to its audience. The way you're seeing the marketing approach uh, differ is not really just limited to the film space. It's a social trend. It's like we're no longer marketing products. We're marketing conversations around products. So that really means you need to target peer leaders and tastemakers to get that conversation started. Back in, I mean, five, ten years ago, the main sort of thrust was paid media. And we were like, let's saturate the market. Everywhere you go, you're going to see this product. And we're going to spend millions and millions of dollars to get our product out to the masses. As media is starting to stratify and the audience is starting to further segment, paid media becomes more and more expensive because your audience is even is fragmented so much. So you really have to kind of focus and spend your money smart and hyper-target and micro-target and say, okay, let's identify these 200 blogs that reach these five subcategories of our audience and let's figure a way to build a relationship with them so that they're willing to start a conversation about our product to their fan base and hopefully their fan base eventually becomes evangelist for our project. It's a balance. you know. It's, I, it's more about strong connections with your audience that is maybe fewer but definitely more passionate about your work, then I'd say shotgun. You know, it's all about laser targeting and building a relationship with people that are really into what you're into. Uh, Reversal Films was started in April 2007 in response to two major infrastructural gaps in the Texas economy. One is a lack of a financing infrastructure and one is a lack of a marketing and distribution infrastructure. So basically the complaints and challenges that we're hearing from filmmakers is A, how do I get my movie made? B, how do I get my movie out? In response to those major infrastructural gaps that exist in the Texas film economy, our explorations discovered that a lot of Texas capital has been burned in the past. And a lot of that's due to a lack of education on producer side, a lack of education when it comes to the marketplace, a lack of education when it comes to reaching an audience, a lack of education when it comes to marketing and distributing your own projects. In the past, filmmakers have just made a movie, taken it to Sundance or some festival and hoped to sell it. Now, going to a film festival and crossing your fingers is not a business model anymore. It's surprising that films were financed with that lack of a business plan and lack of a business model in the past. But as a result, you're, you're dealing with kind of a, a negative view on the opportunities that film investment provides. Um, one of the biggest challenges is that financial advisors on a linguistic level advise wholeheartedly against investing in films. And it's because of past track records and producers not really delivering on their promises. So one of the challenges that Reversal is addressing is, is really an educational initiative which is how to educate Texas Capital on how to evaluate an investment. We're working with local film commissions to bring in different experts, people that are experts in risk management, finance, studio movies, independent films. I think that a lot of people, when they go to these panels, they've got such a breadth of different people on the board and on the panel speaking to you that they're comparing apples and oranges because studio movies and independent film are completely different. And with this current bus cycle that we're going through in independent film, you're seeing that middle film kind of fall apart. If you're going to break um, break the film space into different markets, you've got your $50 million movie and up. And all the studios are doing that. Recently, Miramax was closed, Picture House closed, New Line Cinema closed, Warner Independent closed. And these were the, the companies that were financing your $15 million to $50 million film. Now that they're no longer in business or have been absorbed by their parent companies, who makes that film? And these, most of those films are your Oscar films, you know? In addition to that, you're also seeing sort of the smaller markets start to stratify as well. You've got people financing 5 to $7 million films, a handful of them. But most of the film and activity that you're seeing in the low-budget independent space is in your $3 million and below. So it's a really interesting time as far as production budgets and the types of value sets you're able to attract on this smaller level, given the fact that there is no middle ground in the marketplace anymore. When I first chose to become a filmmaker, it was either politics, business, or making film. 
And I feel like making film is the only way you can get 300 people to be quiet for an hour and a half and just listen. And I saw the work that was being fed to people, and I saw the sort of lack of responsibility that came with the content that was being produced. And I'm saying, this is a huge responsibility and a privilege to get to share your ideas with this many people. And I feel like a lot of times people are trying to push an ideology that makes you want to buy something or makes you feel insecure because you don't have that. And I think at the end of the day, what the theatrical experience provides is a connection. You go to a theater, you sit in the dark with 300 people, and you watch this story, and you can feel them responding to it. And that's a community experience that costs $10, and it makes you feel good, and it makes you feel something. And I think in this world of social media and this world where we're totally wired and not connected, people have a hunger to feel more connected. And that's why the live event and the theatrical experience will never go away, is because people need each other. 